Good morning. Welcome to worship on the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, the season of growth in God's spirit. I'm Pastor Heidi Heimgarger with Pastor Mike Galerius here at First Lutheran. We warmly greet all members and friends in our sanctuary and in the wider community who are worshiping with us in person and via streaming options. We did have to restart that Facebook live feed, so hopefully, I think people are getting back on. I see myself. So if you, if you notice me looking down, I'm, I'm probably double-checking that. Um, so I'm trying to worship two different ways this morning. It's so good to have you here. Um, each week it seems that we have uh, returning friends and some visitors with us. And we have returned to most aspects of our church ministries with a few modifications. Um, so for our newcomers, the service is printed in your bulletin with hymns in the back of the red book. The page numbers are in the front of that same red book. Masks are encouraged here always, um, completely welcome for any who prefer them because we are the welcome place. I do want you to know that we continue in the highest tier of designation that is high transmission for Steele County, unfortunately. So this designation means that masks are recommended in public places regardless of vaccination status and your executive team supports that recommendation. So if you would ever prefer to have a mask when you come, we do try to put notes on the doors Please know there are some masks in the narthex and kind of at the like north or actually the east door i believe we have a little uh, kiosk there as well also the offering is collected in the narthex to minimize the handling of objects across families and you can also give right from your pew or from home if you have a smartphone you just go to our website and toggle to the bar that says give online now it's convenient it is guaranteed to be secure and each dollar of course furthers our mission our radio broadcast today was given in loving, loving memory of Lou Shepherd for First Lutheran Friend, excuse me, was given in loving memory of Lou Shepherd and for First Lutheran Friends by Irene Shepherd. So Irene, we know you're probably listening from Minneapolis and we greet you back with love today. The gladiolas by the altar are by way of local grower, Tina Bush. We thank you for those. And our offering of school supplies will be collected for about three more Sundays through Labor Day weekend. There's a basket, it's very full here in the chancel, and there's a second drop-off located near the church office. So students, if you brought something today and you want to bring it up during our offering time, don't hesitate to do that. In our prayers this week, we remember those who are grieving losses in their families. Today that list includes the family and friends of Shay Boer, whose service was held, I believe, yesterday. Uh, we also remember Pastor Craig Grimeford's family, his wife, and adult children. Pastor Craig died last April from complications due to COVID. And Craig was a longtime mission partner in the Faribault area and hospice chaplain. We also have some joyful announcements. We have some new babies among us. So congratulations to Jacob Gray and Kelsey Wolf and big sister Paisley, who welcomed daughter Mason Grace on August 6th. Also, we congratulate John and Randy Peterson, who welcomed Aria Gale, their daughter, on the 12th, so just a few days ago. She welcomes, or she joins big sisters Mila and Kendra and big brother Riker. And also, I have a very cute photo on my phone of Sadie of Elizabeth Euland. That would be daughter of Jacob and Ann Euland. Jacob was one of our leaders for the youth gathering in 2018 and is currently in seminary preparing to be a pastor. I told Jacob, and I'm now putting um, Macy and Aria on alert too, that all of these girls are already signed up for the church youth gathering in 2036. <laughs> our Blooming Prairie Cancer Group does marvelous work in our community, and they are currently working on their flag fundraiser. And we have many members in our congregation who are part of that team present today. Um, Jennifer Milton and Sherry Craig stand ready to assist you if you would like to sponsor a flag. Our bulletin insert invites all of those who are contemplating membership to consider participating in this fall's welcome milestone. And our scholarship committee has an invitation as well. So at this time, I would like to invite Marilyn Meshke forward. I believe she would like to share a little bit more about that event. I've noticed in your bulletin today that there is a garden Sunday, August 22nd, and it's in your insert, thanks to Pastor Heidi, 
I just wanted to d just announce that our, our Garden Sunday is next Sunday. And um, if you have produce or flowers or, or candy, just put it on the counter in the kitchen. And uh, we'd really appreciate anything that you bring. And please come and bring your wallet uh, and give a donation to the scholarship committee um, that will be serving next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you so much. And because of um, we have you know a little more time where the building is is closed, I believe Marilyn and the team would prefer those donations to come the day of, correct? So come with your donations that morning, unless you've made other direct uh, arrangements with Marilyn or a member of the scholarship committee. Um, also, as she mentioned, those things are online and in the bulletin about those events. Uh, we also wish to remind you that Sunday School registration is available at the click of a button right on the website, right hand side, and there is a paper registration kiosk in the narthex. so if you prefer to take a paper one home, fill it out, and return it. For our confirmation students, a fun night is planned for, it's August 26th, right? So not this week, but a week from Thursday. So 10th um, graders, you have a confirmation retreat time that same afternoon. And all of the details were mailed to your household this week. So please take a look. There are some things you would have to return, permission slips and so forth. Um, please take a look and participate with us. We'd be excited to have you. Our schedule for the week is printed in the bulletin. I would like you also to notice the meeting of the church council will be one week later than normal due to fair week. So you won't see it this Tuesday. That council meeting, deacons, trustees will meet on Tuesday, August 24th. And First Lutheran is gearing up for the fall in the coming weeks, so I invite everyone to watch your mailboxes as well as your email inboxes. Find ways to participate and engage. We sure love having you here. Church, church has a deeper meaning when we are united and serving and learning together. Um, I wish to thank our organist Betty Kugelson and pianist Chris Butler for accompanying us today. Our reader this morning is Becky Noble. Our preacher is Pastor Michael Larius. Our sound and video is run by Judy, Hublet, Judy Richard, Brian Hubland, and Paul Heingartner. And now I invite you to take a moment of silence as we begin our worship with a time of confession. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. I invite you to take a moment for silent reflection and self-examination.
you all. Please join with me in the prayer of the day as printed in our bulletin. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our special music this morning is a member favorite. Uh, you may be seated. It has been pre-recorded by Melissa Stone and Betty Ingelson. It is titled, In the Garden.
beautiful song, one of my favorites. Our first reading for the day is from Proverbs, uh, chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls, she calls, from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live, and walk in the way of insight. Our psalm for today is Psalm 34. And verses 9 to 14, please read responsibly. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The blind are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among you takes pleasure in life? and desires long life to enjoy prosperity. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God for the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here in readings. Thank you, Becky. It's time for our children's message today. Are there any kids that would like to come up and visit with me? And if not, I will speak to everyone kind of uh, as all of the children. Um, so today I would like to talk to you all about your favorite foods. Does anybody have a favorite food that they'd like to share? I've got a whole list. I was trying to pick my favorite, 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 and I can't. There's like categories of favorites for me. So if anyone has a favorite they'd like to shout out, I'd love to hear your favorite foods. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Lefsa. Lefsa. <laughs> Popcorn. I love it. What? I don't know what that is. Ruma Girl. I was waiting for Ludafisk. So when I was making my list, I was thinking pizza, of course, because without pizza, I wouldn't have made it through my 20s. Um, then I was also thinking some sort of steak and sweet corn, of course, because sweet corn makes every meal better. Um, and then I was thinking like um, a hundred grand bar or something with chocolate and caramel, however you can do that. Those are sort of my favorites. So now if you've thought of your favorite food, the question I have for you is, whatever it is, could you live on that forever? Your favorite, the most wonderful piece of food or meal that you could ever think of, could you have that three days, three times a day, seven days a week for 90 years. I see somebody shaking their head, yes. I think that's caramel and chocolate right there talking. <laughs> well, Jesus says that he is the bread of life in our gospel reading. But our first reading that Becky just read from Proverbs was talking about wisdom. And that there is a true wisdom from God and that true wisdom is what guides us. And that true wisdom is that we cannot live eternally on anything from this earth. 
and that our favorite food that we find that we want to eat all day long every day isn't food for eternity. But Jesus said that he is the bread of life. And as he's telling this, the people around him are like, what, we're supposed to eat Jesus? That's what he says. And what he's telling us is our souls, our spirit, our, our being needs to consume Jesus. His teachings, his way, and the belief that he really died for each one of us. And that that is the food for eternal life. And that that will sustain us in this life and the next. Um, and so that's the truth that we search for as we come to worship, as we live our daily lives, as we interact with people, and as we um, come to the end of our life. That's the food that sustains us, is Jesus. No matter how good the hundred grams are, they cannot sustain us eternally. So let us pray. Holy Lord, we thank you that you have provided all we need and that you are the source of true life. Open our hearts, open our lives, open us to you always. Amen. I'd invite you to stand as you're able for the singing of the gospel acclamation. For today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 51 to 58. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is the true food, and my blood is the true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the ones who eat this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, you are the source of all knowledge and true wisdom. We get lost and confused by the false teachings of the world that we live in. Open us to your truth, God, and give us your wisdom. Amen. So there's an old adage that says, with age comes wisdom. And many believe this, that the older we get, just somehow inherently the wiser we get. Right? Somehow wisdom is just attached to gray hair or, or balding hair. Well, Oscar Wilde, the author and the poet and the playwright from the 1800s, um, sees it a little different than that. Oscar Wilde said, with age comes wisdom, but sometimes age comes alone. I thought that was an interesting quote, because I know the first part. With age comes wisdom. But I've wondered, so every older person I know is wise? Well, I'll tell you what. I'd argue with that. Wisdom is not inherent with life and aging. Wisdom depends on what we've learned and what we've experienced. Right? If all you've learned and follow are lies and false teachings, you cannot become wiser. You just continue to be fooled by untruths. That's exactly what the first reading is all about in Proverbs chapter 9. It's about wisdom. It's one of my favorite scriptures. It's one that I've listened to 
Um, I don't know that I adhere to it as well as I wish I could, but it's something that I strive for, is wisdom. So I was reading from the NRSV, reading this text, and then I grabbed another Bible that I have. It's called The Message. Um, I know Pastor Heidi's talked about this Bible. Eugene Peterson wrote it, and it's um, contemporary English, really contemporary today language um, that he wrote the whole, rewrote the whole Bible in. And so I'd like to read um, Proverbs 9, 1 through 6. If you have your reading, um, you can follow along. It's different, but look at the difference. It's really wonderful how he did this. So this is uh, Proverbs 9, 1 through 6. Lady Wisdom has built and furnished her home. It's supported by seven hewn timbers. The banquet meal is ready to be served. Roasted lamb, wine poured out, table set with silver and flowers. Having dismissed her servant maids, Lady Wisdom goes to town, stands in a prominent place, and invites everyone within the sound of her voice. Are you confused about life? Don't know what's going on? Come with me. Oh, come. Have dinner with me. I've prepared a wonderful spread. Fresh baked bread, roast lamb, carefully selected wines. Leave your impoverished, confused confusion and live. Walk up the street to a life with meaning. Isn't that beautiful? In this, wisdom is inviting us into a banquet. So, something interesting, um, in Greek, the word wisdom is Sophia. It's feminine. And so wisdom has the attributes of a woman. Throughout all the wisdom texts, wisdom is seen in the feminine form. And so, not many things in the Bible have this feminine attribute, but wisdom is given this female um, pronoun, right? She, throughout there. She, Sophia, is calling you, the text says. Wisdom has set a banquet for you. Wisdom wants to show you the truth of God and the world. And wisdom will give you a meaningful life. In there it says, are you ever confused about life or don't know what's going on? Maybe you need to feed on wisdom. She's here with us. If you've tried everything the world has to offer and yet you feel empty or at least not full, maybe you've been eating some of the wrong foods. Did you notice that wisdom, like I said, is offering a banquet with choice food and drink? That's truth, not lies. The food of the world only gives us scraps or junk or temporary things that maybe fill us for now, but then we're hungry again. Or maybe they don't fully fill us, they just give us something to go on. Well, the food from God, which is wisdom, is what John was offering in the Gospel of John, excuse me, what Jesus was offering in the Gospel of John. His flesh and blood as the saving food from heaven. That's what Jesus said. We need to feast on Jesus. So I was wondering what you think. Is this a reference to Holy Communion? Is Jesus talking about coming to the table and feasting? Probably. Probably. But is that the only thing that Jesus was talking about? I don't think so. I think communion is part of this, and we come to the table to receive God, to receive Jesus. But there's more than that. Right? There is more. It's not just Sunday morning twice a month or once a month. Through Jesus offering his body and blood for the sins of the world, that's the flesh that's needed. That sacrifice that Jesus did 2,000 years ago is the eternal gift for the world. There's nothing else needed. Right? We can try to please God all we want, to be good enough. We can do all the right things and be good, and yet we still fail. We can find others who are more sinful than us, right, to prove our goodness. Well, they're a lot worse than me. But that doesn't save me. That reminded me of uh, driving down the highway 
at going 77 in the 70. And when the police officer pulls over and say, well, he was going faster than me, doesn't get me out of a ticket. I was still speeding. Finding someone more sinful than me doesn't make me less sinful either. Right? We can also hate ourselves, beat ourselves up, feel guilty, wish it wasn't so. But that just hurts us more and doesn't fix our brokenness. All of these things are earthly foods that we try to fill ourselves with. These are the things that we try to take in to make ourselves feel not broken or to fix ourselves. But that's foolishness. Those things don't save. They can't. We need a solution. We need food that lacks and actually solves our problem. And that's Jesus. He came down from heaven as the living bread that will feed us and sustain us for eternity. That we don't have to beat ourselves up. That we don't have to look for someone worse than us. We can just trust and believe in Jesus. So if you remember two weeks ago I was preaching and it was again about the bread of life. And the people around Jesus were asking him, what must we do to perform the works of God? This is chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. They asked him, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Period. That's what he said. Trust in Jesus. Trust that God sent him for you. Believe in Jesus. Believe that he lived, that he died, that he rose for your sins. That he came for you as the solution to the broken world. That is the banquet food that wisdom has given to us. That's the choice of wines and the roasted lamb and the bread and the flowers and the beautiful table. All set up for each one of us. See, with this truth, we get older and we get wiser. Thanks be to God for such a wonderful God that we have. Amen.
our Confession of Faith, the Apostles' Creed. It can be found on page 127 in the front of your worship books, or you may share it from memory. Please join me. I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, rooted in Christ and sustained by God's Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, for the world, and for all of creation. Let us pray. God of wisdom, Enlighten your people, guide theologians and authors, seminary professors and scholars as they seek knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding. Teach us to ask faithful questions, open our minds to new ideas, and center us in your wisdom and in your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, mend the earth. From warming oceans to melting ice caps, increase our awareness as we respond to ecological challenges. Shield those who lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address conflicts like health and safety, climate patterns, and a just society for all to flourish. We remember especially the people of Afghanistan, in Haiti today. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by addiction and ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to all who are grieving or suffering this moment. Especially today, we lift up Reed, Karen, Dawn, Bruce, Ashley, Sue, Kay, Ed, Wayne, Jerry, Darcy, Tom, Marty, Maynard, Brenda, Ruby, Richard, Alex, Rick, Matthew, and Lisa. We remember also the family and friends of Shea Boer and the community of Hayfield, Pastor Craig Brinehorse and the community of Fair. We remember hospital and laboratory staff who continue to care for COVID patients and many others we remember in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, you inspire your artists and all whose gifts enliven this assembly. Bless the creative work of musicians, poets, hymn writers, and composers. As you bring us to new life and daily appreciation of the bread from heaven, help us to abide in your love and resurrection power. Shield Aria Peterson, Mason Gray, Sadie Euland, and all who welcome their births. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we lift our prayers to you, holy God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace as you are comfortable with the neighbors around you as we sing together our offertory song and share our offerings together.
you are able. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set our tables with your very self, and you have called us to feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us, and make us to be what we receive here, your body, for the life of the world. Amen. We pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, receive this blessing. May the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song today is number 537, On Our Way Rejoicing. Let us sing. 